Today's edition of Creating Connections is powered by AT&T Business Internet, dedicated internet access that allows us to bring the news to you. All right, global supply chains came under severe pressure and disruption during the COVID-19 pandemic as business priorities and customer preferences shifted from winter storms to poor backlogs to infamous the infamous back, uh, backup at the Suez Canal. The last 24 months have put renewed emphasis on the need for efficiency and visibility across the supply chain. Joining us now is Claire Husted, AVP of Industry Solutions Marketing at AT&T Business. Claire, good morning. How have good you morning. How have you seen businesses adapt and evolve how they're managing their supply chain over the past few years? Well, businesses and their supply chains are changing, but that's because, as you said earlier, buying is changing. No one can live without two-day shipping, customization, you know, different sizes, colors, materials, you name it. I mean, I'm still waiting on a dresser from a year ago. So that difficulty added to manufacturers. So we're seeing them start to find alternate supply sources. In March of 2020, only three in 10 companies had actually diversified their supply chain. A year later, you're seeing about a third that are doing that. Um, they're also moving away from just-in-time production. We're also seeing, um, I listened to your earlier segment talking about the CHIPS Act, and we're seeing mass onshoring. So about half of companies are bringing production closer to where the goods are actually consumed to help with inventory management, shipping, and things like that. So there's there's big changes, and I'm really excited to see us invest in, in U.S. manufacturing and bringing those chips back. And to that point there, AT&T Business has a role here. Let's talk about that. How is AT&T Business making supply chains more connected and accessible? So at t Business is making supply chains more connected and accessible with our fast, reliable, and secure networks, notably our fiber network. We've had, we have amazing features that do site typing so your IT person doesn't have to recreate the wheel each time. They do real-time upspeeding, so as you're seeing a rise in your network or a lowering in your network, we can help you take care of that and manage it so you don't see any disruption. And then we have really cool reporting features so you know how your network is performing in real-time um, up to the minute. Um, second, there's a lot of technologies that we actually consult on to help supply chains run more efficient, efficiently. Um, choosing chain, uh, supply chain management software that works best with our sensor technology, cloud computing um, to bring that data closer to make near real-time decisions. And as I mentioned earlier, I, our IoT sensors, they help track beyond your traditional inventory management. Companies that stuck with that and only had that visibility really struggled. Um, and are continuing to struggle, but we can help you go beyond that and understand buying behaviors and get deeper with what your customers are actually purchasing, when, where, and how. So to, to some of those points, what are the real-time benefits of a more connected supply chain and how critical is that right now? It's incredibly critical and having a digital blueprint of your connected supply chain is incredibly important. It can help, I would say two main things. One is reducing risk from disruptions. Um, that largely stems from diversifying your suppliers. To effectively do that, you need IT systems that can help supply chain collaboration, which is how you coordinate your orders, your shipment, your inventory between company and multiple suppliers. We have some really cool IoT sensors that do like a geofence. So as soon as your shipment arrives on site, it knows and it can trigger that invoice. So you get paid faster, which is, I think, what everyone wants. Um, half of manufacturers are turning to the cloud in the next few years to be able to do that. Um, AT&T has amazing solutions like NetBond that can connect computers running outside of the public internet, which creates an additional uh, level of security. And the second would be the increased efficiency, um, and that's mostly from automation. So people like to work with robots, not like robots. So automation saves time and money, and it also helps you retain employees, which I don't think anybody is exempt from the great resignation. Yeah. So as you're doing quality control, um, you know things that are handled better probably by machines, and you can repurpose your team members to do more thought-provoking activities. Um, so if you can imagine, you know, a T-shirt coming off the manufacturing line, if you've got computer vision that men that measures, you know, 15 different dimensions, you know, the collar width, the left shoulder, you can actually get to about 99.5% accuracy in under six seconds. So 
a human doesn't really want to do that. You get fatigue. I don't even think a human would love doing that task. So there's a lot of really great things that, you know, technology can do and we can help connect. Yeah, but to your point, it's critical to quality control and having a, you know, robot do that as opposed to a human helps probably, you know, reduce churn and, and maintain um, employees, especially at a, a mid of time where we are dealing with the great resignation. Let me ask you this. We are in a time where we are more conscious of our environmental footprint and the impact that it has. As we're seeing supply chains shift a little bit, the, I think there's a, a valid question in can efficiency and connectivity on the supply chain actually equate to a better environmental um, you know, sustain, sustainability? Absolutely, um, Alicia. I think that when you have an efficient supply chain, that equates to better environmental sustainability. So. I think everybody probably knows this, so I'm not giving a, a huge fact away, but fuel is the number one non-labor operating expense uh, for trucking fleets. Yeah. Um, and that, anytime you can be more efficient there, you're saving fuel and you're saving the climate. So as transportation grows, as all of these shipping and, and different packages that you're ordering start get uh, get out into the world, you realize that you're adding to one of the largest emitters of greenhouse gases. So just a quarter of those uh, transportation gases come from those medium and heavy duty trucks. And that's growing as we continue to keep buying. So connected trucks can actually save you between five and 9% fuel time by reducing sudden lane changes, fast driving, hard braking. Um, we can capture that data through different capabilities that we have. But I would say um, our at t Fleet Complete product is probably perfect for that. The other thing is it helps um, create optimized routes so you burn less fuel between stops. And most of the fuel burning is happening whenever people are, trucking uh, teams are waiting for loading and unloading. And that's about two to five hours just of idling. And you've got to keep those refrigeration trucks cold. And so you don't want to stop that, but you can use um, warehouse management system to automate that paperwork. So your deliveries are made more quickly. And as I said earlier, you can do a geofence. So when your truck arrives, it knows that we need to start unloading and reloading. And we've got really great technology that can help with that. I am also curious, this kind of tech solution, this improvement in connection and accessibility, if there's a leveling the playing field effect that is happening here, particularly for small business, and if so, how? How is all of this potentially leveling the, leveling the playing field for those you know, mom and pop businesses that are the backbone of our economy? So technology has become the great equalizer for, for all businesses, and I think small businesses especially, because you're now seeing them compete with larger mainstream businesses. And, and nothing more than we see on Instagram nowadays in the direct-to-consumer market. I get marketed to all the time at an equal platform, but I also think that there are many off-the-shelf solutions that you can help automate the supply chain. So things that you think mass businesses do, um, like the trucks I mentioned earlier, the at t Fleet Complete Solution, we're seeing small trucks, like 20, a fleet of 20 using that, as well as a fleet of 10,000. Everybody can benefit, and they're thinking of that more as an investment. I also think robots um, are a huge investment, um, but you start thinking, hey, this is more of like a mass market company that can do that. But over the past two decades, just like you're carrying around a mini computer with your phone in your pocket, you can now invest the same amount of money in a robot or a cobot um, because they have come down by a factor of 60%. Wow. So you're looking at like a low cost cobot that's about $8,000 to $20,000. Um, so you can get you know a handful of phones for the same price that you can get something to help you with automation, packing boxes, checking and doing inventory management. Um, but for the connectivity, which is the most important because you want something that's fast, reliable, and secure, you should really rely on AT&T because we power the best in the business and do a great job with supply chain management for people. Clara, such great insight. Really appreciate your time. Clara Hustad, AVP at Industry Solutions Marketing at AT&T Business. All right, AT&T Business is keeping your business connected with AT&T 5G, fast, reliable, secure. Visit at and slash network services for more information. Thanks for watching. For more videos from AT&T Business, click subscribe.